Okay. Um, okay, now, yeah, I think now it's better. Can you hear me now, Heidi? Yeah. Yep. Ah, excellent, excellent, right, let's begin. So um, thanks to everyone who sent in questions in advance. Um, I'll just go through them. Some of them were quite similar. So, oh, we're sorry, sorry, my bad. Um, okay, I guess um, we'll start with start with a statement. Sorry, I thought it was just a question and answer thing. Go ahead. I did. Uh, now it's answering the questions in no, the no, chat we're, box. We're, we're, we're starting with a one minute statement, I think. Apparently, I wasn't aware. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Heidi Chen. I'm a student at, uh, I'm a graduate student at the George Business School in University of Cambridge. Uh, I'm a second year postgraduate. Uh, and before this, I have been a member of the World Plus Men Leadership Century member for about one and a half years. Uh, so during my uh, attendance for this, my, my participation for this election comes from my membership during uh, the time in World Plus Men Leadership Century because we always have women speakers, women scholars, uh, speaker series uh, in the century and they gave people ideas about academia, about life at work. And I found those very inspiring. And as a woman, I particularly found that uh, there, there are something lacking in our um, student handbook and in our school life as well to support women, to better support women. So for instance, I think we can have maternity leave or uh, female dis uh, discomfort day, read and black and white in our student handbook. Um, that's something I personally just experienced. Um, I just had a, a, a surgery a couple, couple weeks ago and I found it hard to actually take leave from, uh, from my academic work. Um, I have to ask for extra um, doctor's approval and doctor's note to get the professor's approval, but which I didn't experience at work before, right? Because at work, if you have maternity leave, you, 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 you took it very naturally. It's like a rule already in building in the, you know, the, the corporation system. And I, I think that's a little bit lacking in um, here at the Cambridge. I did. So I found that maybe we can improve that. Um, um, and so um, uh, that, that's that been um, one minute. So um, all right, cool. So yeah, no, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Sorry for, for the disorganization, as I say, had some problems no. getting here. No, okay. no, 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 it's fine. So now I think we, um, We'll move on to the prepared questions. I think that's how this, this is going. Correct me if I'm wrong at any point, Kate. Okay, yeah. Oh, another one minute statement at the end? Okay, yes. Um, yeah, sorry, no, I had no idea of the format. Okay, uh, I just assumed it was prepared questions and then questions from the audience. So, so we'll do that. So yeah, thank you to everyone who sent in questions in advance. Um, some of them were, um, I had a look at them this morning. Some of them were quite similar. So I'm just gonna um, group them together. Um, okay, so the first question is, I'm just going in order of submission, it's completely arbitrary. Um, do you have experience with the Kamsu women's campaign, particularly in leadership roles? Uh, I had experience in students' campaign. So before I was also a woman's congressor in my undergraduate university, mm -hmm. which was National Taiwan University, mm -hmm. and I did I did have a lot of um, scores and like rules built up for during my um, uh, appointment year, um, which was about a year, for an exact year. And for this year, because our um, it's this is a sabbatical rule, so we only have about five months appointment if I were elected. Um, so I I will see how much I can do, but. Um, I really expect to do um, a lot for for the women students. So it's uh, you, you guys' advice are always welcome and voices are always welcome. Okay, excellent, thank you. Um, so um, the next one is, um, so I'll kind of try and group these together because there's quite a lot of <clears throat> very similarly worded questions. Um, 
So how will you make um, the women's campaign inclusive to trans and non-binary people that are part of the campaign? Um, and well, more widely trans and welcoming to trans and non-binary people um, within the university and support their rights. Yeah, I've already, uh, so in fact, I already talked to my friend, even uh, their uh, biological uh, gender is male, but uh, I, I talk to them if they feel comfortable and they identify themselves as a woman, they can vote. Um, I think I, I am very supportive in, and inclu inclusive because I was from Taiwan, right? And uh, like same gender, uh, same, same sex marriage are legalized here. Uh, it's allowed, so I, it's like a very basic thought in rooted in my mind. I, I I'm very inclusive for a uh, transgender and and supportive for um for for that any kind of you know like you, you as long as you self identify as a woman or you have that kind of thought, you can talk to me, and I think you you can find the support here. Okay, thank you. Um. So um, next question is if I just delete the ones. Wait, I should probably not. Uh, I'll just hold on. I'll just mark them off uh, here. So the next one is um, what will you do to um, help students who weren't previously involved with WOMCAM get involved? Uh, weren't involved in the student union or weren't involved in the women's rights? Um, so uh, the students who aren't currently involved in the campaign here at Cambridge, or, or maybe I guess more widely uh, with, with feminism, but um, the question itself is specifically about the, the SU women's campaign. Oh, okay. So I, I've already been trying very hard the past few days, a uh, few weeks to be active, uh, actively advocate for this campaign on social media. Um, as you can think of Facebook, or WhatsApp, group chat, uh, WeChat, uh, Twitter, Instagram, I I've been trying to advocate because I know that a lot of people are on vacation right now and I don't know if they're paying attention to this election, but we need more people to vote. Uh, this is a liberal, you know, liberal election, <laughs> the democracy, right? So uh, I, I've been trying doing that personally uh, and, uh, and not just in the English group, but also groups that speak other language as well, like Mandarin or Taiwanese. So that's what I did. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so um, next question is, um, how would you ensure good working relations with the committee members of WOMCAM? Um, I think I am starting to build that already during the election. Like I have emails and communications back and forth and I've been communicating with my body, Kate. Um, I've communicated with Sam, with, with Matt already. Uh, so I, I, I think from my experience, uh, just by how I, I'm hanging out with my peeps at the Judge Business School and my, in my cohort at the Master of Accounting, because oh, I'm studying Master of Accounting. Uh, I, I, I think I'm doing okay and pretty well, and I've got support from them as well. Okay. And also, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get along, go on, go on. Yeah, yeah, I just want to add one point for people who uh, brought that concern, just to illustrate my ability, because I have participated in student government as a women's congresswoman before, right? So this is not going to be my first time. I just want to emphasize that because I did have that experience in undergraduate. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, how will you support the upcoming industrial action? Uh, industrial action? Strikes, the strikes. Uh, at the University of Cambridge? Yeah, so in, um, I think, a few weeks, I'm not sure exactly the details, I saw it announced, um, there's going to be another round of UCU strikes. So the question is asking how you'll support the oh, upcoming action. Oh, that, okay, that, okay. I think I will definitely talk to my committee members to see how they want to react uh, from the woman's perspective. 
uh, because if I were elected, I will be the woman's officer, not the, uh, the, the, the president, right? So I think that should come from what the, the president say and what does other committee members think. Uh, we can do a poll in the school and see what the student want to. Yeah. Okay, thanks. And um, so this is the last of the prepared, um, this is the last of the submitted questions. Um, after this question, uh, we'll do hands up. Um, how can the university ensure the safety of women and what measures would you push for? Okay, that's a very good question because I did notice that it's kind of dangerous sometimes for women to walk along at late night. And, you know, especially in the UK, I mean, around our school, it's kind of dark. And my experience, because I studied at UC Berkeley before in uh, in United States. Um, so back then we had like a patrol, school patrol car um, that says UC Berkeley. It looks a little bit like police car, but it's not like police, police. Um, but it is the UC uh, University of California Berkeley School Patrol. And what they do is that they take students call whoever that needs a pickup after like 11 p.m. from certain point to certain point. They can have that bodyguard kind of uh, support to support. And I, I found it especially useful. I use it once as a woman and because UC Berkeley always had like gum shoots. Uh, gun is legalized in the United States. So uh, it's particularly dangerous there. And I, so what I found dangerous is that there are drunk people uh, around Cambridge. Uh, you know, we have clubs and night, night clubs, bars. Um, so it is a little bit dangerous for, uh, especially like I am petite. So I, 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 I could easily get targeted. So I could feel that very deeply, uh, your fear. And I, speaking of that, I strongly suggest we have like a patrol system uh, or not system, just a car for student, female students or women students, self-identify as a woman, whoever that in need. I think that will keep us safer, like have a physical, uh, mental, mental safety, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, if anyone uh, attending the meeting has any questions for Heidi that they didn't submit in advance, uh, can you put your hands up and I'll uh, call on you one by one. Uh, Isabella? Hi, um, sorry, my lighting here is really bad. I don't think you can see me, but hello. And hi, I'm Isabella. I'm the hi. vice chair of Women's Campaign. Uh, my question to Heidi is mainly about um, how do you envision the working relations between the committee members and uh, the sabbatical officer? Because you mentioned just now that you've been in communication with Sam and other um, officers in the SU, but we're referring to committee members. So people who are present today, we're the women's campaign committee member, and we do things like we organize strikes, weekly forums, and stuff like that. So if you've uh, if you have made the effort to get to know women's campaign a bit better, you would know the kind of activities we organize. So my question is mainly about how can you assist the campaign or lead the campaign in doing what it's already doing and on the basis of that improve what we're doing. Um, so I will just do like anything you need me to do. Uh, do you mean like proactively bring up ideas or uh, to support what you guys have already been doing? Um, so usually our last sabbatical officer, what um, what they did for us was to help us uh, communicate with the student union. So in the case of if we need to book a venue or seek approval from the union to implement certain changes or to host an event that requests, uh, that require the approval of the union, that person, the sabbatical officer, will be our point of contact between the campaign and the union itself. So now you're running for this role as the midpoint, as the person taking on the communication works of both sides. So my question to you is more about how are you going to serve this role of, you know, so-called like a bridge between WOMCAM and the SU? Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, I, I can do that. So it's the, the bridge, the communicating between the committee and the SU, right? Uh, it's more like, how do you plan to do it? So, uh, 
Do you plan to attend the weekly forums that we host to get to know what we do better? Do you plan to have regular catch up with our committee members? So concrete things like this. Do you have any idea what you're going to implement? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I will. So I, I think I will refer to what uh, the previous, uh, the last sabbatical women's officer have already been doing. If it's uh, regular, because I am new, but I definitely want to contribute. Um, so I would like to participate if I can do the weekly meeting with you, with you guys, and um, the 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 whatever way that you you've already mentioned. I think those are good. Yep, all right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there any more questions? Going once, okay, excellent. So um, before we move on to the closing statement, um, I need to explain what Ron is. So, um, so Heidi is the only person standing in this election, but uh, when you come to vote, uh, there will also be another option on the ballot paper, and that will be Ron or reopen nominations um, in case the people in this meeting or probably the people watching um, haven't haven't voted in these kinds of elections before. So uh, what reopen nominations is, is it's another candidate in the election, just like um, all of the people in the election, and you can vote for it once you <laughs> don't want any of the remaining candidates to be elected. So um, in this case, there's only one candidate. So if, if you didn't want uh, Heidi to be women's officer, if you wanted kind of for nominations to be very open so other people could, could go for the role, um, then you can, um, then you can vote, then you can vote wrong or reopen nominations. Uh, wrong is an abbreviation for it. Um, I think that's, um, have I have I covered everything there, Kate? Okay. Um, all right, so um, is that an old hand, Isabella? Sorry, sorry, I didn't catch what you said. Is that an old hand or? Uh, is there a what? Oh, you're, you have oh, your oh. hand up. I was no, no, wondering no, 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 if you no, wanted. No, I'm sorry. Okay. I just yeah. forgot to lower it. <laughs> yeah, 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 no worries, no worries. Um, all right, yeah. thank you. Um, okay, so let's move on to uh, one minute closing statement from Heidi. Oh, so I, I do have a question. Can I can I brought up? Yes. Yeah, since uh, you guys are all here. So um, I just wonder, so I, I read the participation online that everyone is working from home right now for uh, due to coronavirus. Is that correct? I'm, I'm not aware. I'm just the facilitator I, I don't know are there any um, members of the oh okay maybe yeah um I think it would be really good if you would like to talk about that Heidi if you email um Matt who I think you have the contact details for already Matt can give you a bit more information about um kind of the situation for SU employees at the moment okay yeah cool okay yeah okay so back to that one minute closing statement right mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I would really love to, because after being uh, a member of the World Policeman uh, Leadership Sanctuary, I really want to get um, a chance to serve all the students at the University of Cambridge as a women's officer to advocate for women's rights and well-being and welfare. Um, I think this is a great opportunity um, right now. Uh, and especially, I think, um, there could be something that be improved uh, from the previous, um, you know, previous uh, women's uh, officer. So I will try to learn from those and I am hoping to get an opportunity from you guys. Um, thank you all for attending today and your support. Um, and I look forward to serving uh, all the self-identified as women students at University of Cambridge. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Um, and yes, I think that's the end of the hustings. Thank you everyone for coming uh, or for watching the recording.